When we were activated, we knew the situation was bad. Worse than anyone knew. We are an elite, highly skilled group of embedded agents. They only call us when everything else has failed. We have no rules. We have no limits. Our job is to protect what remains. We are your co-workers. We are your neighbors. We might even be your friends. But when we get the call, we leave everything behind. We are the Division. After two entire years of delays, Tom Clancy's The Division has been completed and released worldwide. Even after all the hype, beta tests, and promises made by the developer Ubisoft, the questions still remain. Was the wait worth it, and does the game truly keep up with modern shooters and MMOs? For my time playing the game on the Xbox One, the graphics were to be expected. The graphics are crisp and solid. Despite the limitations of current generation hardware, the game holds its end to look and play as a solid game. Where the game truly shines though is the attention to detail in the environment. Walking around New York City seeing familiar sights and streets has never been this interesting a video game form. As you walk through the streets you'll come across taxis, buses, abandoned homes and stores, and tight alleyways where loot is hidden for you to find. AI confrontations are fairly placed, so you will not be bothered often if you are sightseeing the vast map. The city is well recreated and carefully crafted to fit a doomsday style New York. In the division, players are met with chaotic New York filled with anarchy and crime. After contaminated money circulated on Black Friday, an extremely lethal, unknown disease rapidly spread, infecting the population and killing civilians, which led to civil unrest. Anarchy groups were formed, the city was set under quarantine, and the Division was called into action. The Division is a secret group of highly trained soldiers that live an incognito life in the city. These soldiers live among the general group of civilians in a way to call to action and respond immediately. The Division is the last line of defense and do not follow any rules. The game starts you at your character's reflection in a car window as you personalize his or her facial features until you create your own unique agent. The story focuses on taking the city back from the looters and anarchists, sending you on missions to clear areas, eliminate objectives, and take out high value targets. A great touch to this game is your base of operations where you can upgrade any of your three wings in your base to get special abilities or perks. Now all of these features sound great, but the story really falls short in character development and plot. The game doesn't give the player any reason to care about any of the other agents or characters, and rarely provides any backstory on other survivors. The game does not go out of its way to provide the player any backstory, it simply relies on the player to collect in-game echo devices or intel. Not finding any of the in-game intel or missing some can provide a giant grey area in the story, which can make a player feel confused. In The Division, gameplay will not disappoint long-time Tom Clancy fans. The combat takes from the best aspects from previous Tom Clancy games such as the cover system from Rainbow Six and the heads-up display from Ghost Recon. The game offers a strategic cover-to-cover -cover combat system that runs fluently and is fun to use. Movement is swift and easy to master. One of the two downsides of the game is the tremendous amount of running around the city to get to your next objective. Countless times I've ran miles to get to a mission only to be stopped three or four times along the way doing side quests that often pop up which impedes my story progress. This isn't a bad thing, but running through the streets can get repetitive and annoying. The other downside is that guns seem to be very weak against enemies. It can take clips of ammo to eliminate just one enemy, with three axe hits from an enemy will kill your player. This causes frustration and makes the game seem highly unrealistic. Aside from that, the game is full of content and provides players hundreds of missions and side quests to explore and play. On the multiplayer side, the Division urges players to join a squad of other players to both play the main story with up to three buddies and the innovative player vs player aspect of the game, The Dark Zone. The Dark Zone offers players both a PvP and a PvE experience. The Dark Zone is a section of the city that is not controlled by any group. It is filled with contaminated equipment and enemy AI. Dark Zone keys can be found here to open up chests which contain extremely powerful and useful pieces of equipment. Equipment in the zone cannot be equipped immediately and must be picked up via helicopter. The Dark Zone is best to be scavenged in a group as going alone can be dangerous. PvP comes in with the new Rogue system which is simple to understand. Kill a non-hostile agent, you go rogue. 
Once you go rogue, you are marked as rogue to all surrounding players, and you become a target. Be cautious though, the more agents you kill, the longer you go rogue. Rogue has its perks though, you steal all of the enemy player's equipment, and possibly dark zone keys. The Division is both a great and fun game. It provides players with an unforgettable experience through intense battles and remarkable details. The map is huge and filled with a remarkable amount of missions to play through. The story, although weak, is easy to ignore when looting and running through the dark zone with friends. Solo players beware though, the game is best experienced with groups. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it, don't forget to hit the like button, and hopefully this helps you with the decision to buy the game or not, and stick around for more game reviews. Anyways, have a wonderful day.